Hi guys, so in this series we are going to learn these things. We are going to learn what is JSON, JSON structure, arrays and JSON objects. We will compare what is JSON and what is XML and how they are different from each other. We will understand how HTTP call work in Android. Uh, we will get to know what is main thread and background thread in Android. What is async task and after that we will cover some cool topics like models. We will create a custom list view of our own and uh, to optimize our uh, tutorial what we will do we will use Google JSON, JSON and um, image loading, caching and universal image loader and our final application will look like this. So we will have a progress bar and then we will, we will show movies the images and this is the final thing that we will create. So you can see that this data is coming from server and we are parsing the JSON here and we are displaying images, text and so much. Okay so for this series I will be creating a new Android Studio project and in this complete series uh, I will be writing the whole code on the screen so that you can you can follow along with me. So I will name my project as JSON Parsing Demo and the package name will be on the mission dot JSON Parsing Demo. Click next. We will be supporting ice cream sandwich and above. We will be creating a blank activity. Next, the main activity and finish. So it is loading our project. If you also get a similar kind of error, what you can do, you can go to build.gradle file. Go down. Okay. And in the dependencies section, you can change it to 22.1. So I don't know what it is, uh, maybe a bug or something, but it, it's just, uh, it doesn't work with 23.0 on my machine. Maybe it will work in future. So just uh, make it 22.1 and then sync the project okay so we are all set and no more errors here let me just close this okay so this is our main activity xml file and we also have the code here of the main activity dot java code all right so before before going more into JSON parsing, let's first understand what is JSON and how it really works and what it really is. So let me just open this presentation. So first thing first, what is JSON? JSON is to, uh, stands for JavaScript Object Notation and it's a very lightweight data interchange format. So you can actually transfer data to or from internet through this JSON and uh, the most important thing is that it is language independent so you can program in JSON or you can send data in JSON in any language whether it is Java or uh, C++ whatever language it is and it's really easy to understand and parse this JSON and it is based uh, on a subset of JavaScript. This is one example of JSON. So it looks different right now. So what we have here, we have an array of movies and inside it we have objects. These are the objects. Movie Avengers year 2012. This is an example of JSON. This is how the JSON structure will look like. We will get back to this uh, after reading a couple of more slides. So now JSON structure is, is built on two things. Uh, always in JSON you will either have a JSON object or you will have a JSON array. 
So in a JSON object, you will find a key value pair. However, in a JSON arrays, you will always find mostly JSON objects. Now, what is this key value pair? What is a JSON object? What is JSON array? Okay, JSON objects are represented by curly brackets. So whenever you see curly brackets in a JSON response, you just know that it is a JSON object. Wherever you see curly brackets, it's a JSON object. Now, what is key value pair? Now, key value pairs are this. So, the key is movie and the value is Avengers. So, the data is this Avengers, right? And whenever you want to fetch this data, you must have a key associated with it, right? However, uh, if you don't have a key associated with it, you will never know which data you want to fetch. So, to get the Avengers, you must know this key, movie. Or to get the data 2012, which is the year, you must know the key that is here. Key value pairs, uh, the keys and the values are separated by a, a column. So this is a column and you can see that this is a key value pair and it is separated by a column. Again, this is a key value pair and separated by a column. And a couple, a pair is separated by a comma. So this is one key value pair and this is another key value pair and both of these are separated by commas. Right? A single comma. Last thing is a JSON array and they are represented by square brackets. So whenever you see a square bracket, you just know for sure that it is a JSON array. Now let's get back to the JSON we just saw. So on the first, we have a JSON object and inside a JSON object, we have a JSON array. We don't have a key value pair, we have a JSON array because whenever you see this thing, it's a JSON array. However, our first object does not have any name, but our array has a name, and the name of the array is movies. Now, inside an array, we can have multiple JSON objects. So, inside this JSON array, movies, we have two objects. The first object is this one, and the second object is this one. And again, both of these objects are JSON objects. As you can see that we have curly brackets. So now, inside our first object, we have a key value pair, Movie Avenger, and another key value pair, Year 2012. And these objects are also separated by a comma. So a JSON object, then inside that we have a JSON array. Inside that we have multiple number of JSON objects. And inside those objects we have key value pairs. This is the complete JSON structure. This structure may vary for different types of responses, like it depends upon uh, what your server is sending back to you. But always remember that whatever it is, the response you are getting from the server, it will never be outside these bounds. It will either be a JSON object or a JSON array or will be a key value pair and it will be of a similar structure. Now if we compare JSON with the XML, XML is a similar kind of thing and it actually uh, came first and it was, uh, it was, it is older than JSON and it was used before. But the problem with the JSON uh, XML is that it is, is, it is quite confusing, okay? I mean to say it is not confusing but as it is, JSON is far more simple and superior than XML. There are two benefits of JSON over XML. The first is you can see the same data. This same data can be represented in XML and this is our XML. I hope that you will agree that JSON is more simpler than this XML. It is, it is more confusing maybe. Now the first thing is that the simplicity is the reason that this JSON is superior than XML. And the second reason is that if you count number of characters here, JSON will always have lesser number of characters in most of the cases. And that means you are sending less amount of data over the net. So if you are sending 1 MB of JSON, then if you want to send that 
that same data in XML, you will be sending at least 1.2 or 1.3 MB of XML. So the simplicity and lesser data is are the two reasons that JSON is superior than or better than XML. Okay, so now let's get back to our project. Okay, so what we will be doing here in this project, first we will make a simple hit to the server. We will get a response back in JSON format from the server and we will display here on our screen. So to do that, we also need to know how to make HTTP requests or how to get the data from the server in Android. And for that, you need to understand what are HTTP calls in Android. Now let's understand what are HTTP calls and how we make HTTP calls in Android. How do we get the data from the server? And we use HTTP URL connection class instead of using HTTP client class from Apache because now HTTP URL connection is the standard from Android itself. So they, they suggest you to use this, this class. Now what is HTTP URL connection or what is HTTP calls? So what you will be really doing, you will be hitting the server and you'll be sending a request and on that request server will give give you a response back which which you will you, you will use in your app so http url connection class is the first thing that you will use you can send and receive data over the web using the http url connection class and this data can be of any type of a length okay you can you can even fetch a 100 gb file through a url connection class and uh, it can be used to send and receive streaming data without uh, whose length is not known in advance. That is again the same thing. If you don't know how big your file is, you can even use HTTP URL connection class and the data will be streaming. As soon as it is coming, you will you can you can use it in your app and it will continue coming. Okay, the you don't you don't need to know in advance how big is your data. This is one sample of HTTP URL connection. So this is our URL that we will be hitting, android.com. And this is a HTTP URL connection object, open connection, connect. We'll be using our input stream, get the input stream, read the stream, and finally disconnect the connection. So it's like uh, when you open something, you have to close it. So in the final block, we are closing our connection here. Okay, and let's do that before before seeing what is this really what is this problem. Let's try to do what we have learned till now in the code. 